Good morning, everyone. All right. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Our lame joke of the day. I'm just going to throw that out there, just what it is, right? Lame joke of the day. What do you call a hippie's wife? What do you call a hippie's wife? Ah, Mississippi. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Stephanie's on fire this morning. Good job. Sorry, I didn't have time to look for anything better than that, so. <laughs> Had to take care of the dry weather this morning with Titus, so. All right, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. We thank you for the uh, safety that you've given us today. Pray now that you'd uh, guide and direct in the Sunday school lessons to come that we have going on throughout the buildings, Lord. Pray that you'd help us in understanding the things from your word that you have for us today. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you are familiar with the story of Esther? Oh, look at all the hands just go flying up. Look at that. You know, it really is. Oh, so you're biased. Okay, I see. No, oh, I've, uh, I've come to, to like that, that book more and more just because, I don't know, it's maybe my personality or whatever, but the amount of um, moving chess pieces in that story is just amazing. I like that a lot. All right, so seeing as you all know about the story of Esther, let's, let's go through the list of characters, shall we? Let's see how many characters you actually know. All right, so tell me, who is? Raise hand, tell one. Darlene. Esther. Esther. Darlene grabs the easy one. No, you only get one. Bob. Haman. Haman. Well, interesting. Interesting. Darlene goes with Esther. Bob goes with Haman right off the bat. All right, so we got Esther, we got Haman. What else? Who's next? Stephanie. Uh, just right. You always pick the a hazirus, a hazirus, us, a hazirus. Ma'am. Vashti, yes, very good. Vashti. All right, very good. Interesting choice there, uh, Mrs. Petra. Mordecai, good. Mordecai. Who else? Katie, pick one. Character in the book of Esther. Not already on the board, a different one. She remembers teen class. Whenever somebody would come in late, boom, they would get the question. Then they always go, ah, what are we talking about? <laughs> All right, who else? You already had a shot. Clint. Look at these people looking. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, they don't actually name him, though. No. No, I thought Are the ones that were killed? Or those guys, too? Those guys are awesome. Those guys got good mob names. Yeah. Big Than. Dude's name was Big Than. Big Than and uh, uh, T-Resh. Yeah. Two for the price of one there. All right, who else? Who? Haytack, yep. That was uh, the messenger from Esther to uh, Mordecai. Who else we got? Come on, Donna, you got to have something. You've never heard the book of Esther before, Donna? <laughs> yeah, all the easy ones, huh? They're gone, right? Who else? Yeah, the uh, keeper of the women, right? Good old Heggy. Heggy or Heggy Eye. They, they have two different spellings in there for him. All right, who else? He did. Good. 
That doesn't help, does it? <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Heyman, right? Good old Zeresh, right? Heyman and Zeresh. Who else? I thought you guys knew this story already. Come on. Who? Um, yes, very good. He's the one who pointed out the, uh, the gallows at the end. Right? He was in with um, Mordecai and Esther and Hazuerus at the wine party and the one that covered his face. And hey, look, there's uh, gallows over there. Hang him. Who else? We're missing... Do, do, do. We're missing one important one and one... The horse he rode on? Nice. Huh? Oh, you. You just remember from yesterday. I did. All right. So we have Ahasuerus, who's the king. We have Vashti, the queen. We have Mamukin, who was the wise man who suggested removing Vashti. We have Mordecai. We have Esther, or Hadassah. We have Haggai, the keeper of the virgins. We have Big Than and Tresh. All right, the doorman that got hanged for trying to kill Ahasuerus. We have Haman, we have Hatak, Esther's messenger. We have Zeresh, Haman's wife. We have Harbona, who pointed out the gallows. And then we have Shah Ashgaz. Who's that guy? Shah Ashgaz. Is that a real name or did I make that up? Nobody knows. No, he's the keeper of the concubines, right? So once you leave good old Heggy's house, you go over to Shash, Shashgaz, Smash, that guy, right? And that's where you are, right? <clears throat> so who is the linchpin? Who is the most important person, in your opinion, in the book of Esther? Look at all the chickens. Clint. Mordecai? Why? <clears throat> He's in the middle of it all? <clears throat> okay. Who else? Say it again, Tony. Esther? Is Esther really the most important person there? Because didn't Mordecai tell her, well, you know, if you don't do your job, it's going to come from someplace else. <laughs> right. Yoli, what do you think? <laughs> her eyes got big like, what? Ah, oh, so you're just going with your man. Whatever. Right? Oh, watch this. All right, Mrs. Clint. Oh, goes against her, man. Goes against her, man. All right. Luke. Ah, all right. Good job, Clint. Yeah, there you go. Aaron? Oh, there we go. Goes against her, man. All right, good. Mark, what do you think? Malachi? That guy's not even in there. Mordecai? All right. Mark's moved ahead. He's in a different book. <laughs> Darlene, what do you think? Mordecai. She's like, no doubt, Mordecai. All right. Katie, who do you think? Why does he keep calling on me? It's because Shirley's not here. I got somebody to pick on. Come on, Katie. Wow. If that's not a Sunday school answer, God. God did it all. Right. Very good, Katie. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, wife. <laughs> You 
You are such a plant. I like you. All right. All right. Don? Esther? All right. Debbie? Oh, another one. Goes against her, man. Sandy? Mordecai. All right. Mordecai pulls in the lead now. Bob? You got to go with Haman, right? That was your guy. Oh, okay. You only get one pick, dude. Okay. Hazarus? Why? Now you sound like Katie. All right, I like that. I like that. What do you think, Robert? Esther? All right. I mean, Ederlin's got to go something else. Oh, that's lame. All right, who haven't I picked on? Ben? Yeah. Who's the one you take out? It all falls apart. Now you sound like Katie. That's the way it is. Oh, man. All right, fine. Sunday school answer. Rick, did I get you yet? Yeah, I was going to say Mordecai. Oh, well, that's a, that's a Sunday school answer. All right, Shirley, which one do you pick? <laughs> You're the tiebreaker, Shirley. Choose. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who's the most important character in the book of Esther? Really? Are you sure? All these other people are picking Mordecai. Why are you going wrong? Okay. Oh, now it's Mordecai? You want to go for the best two out of three? You sure? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. She's she's like she's like Katie. Just just stop talk calling on me. I don't I don't know. Do you want half a point for each? Is that what you want? Chuck, what do you think? I think the king is the most important person in the book. Oh, I like that. He must have been hiding out in the back, just waiting, knowing I was picking on. Oh, who did? Oh, nice. David narked on me. All right, David, which one are you picking? <laughs> oh man all right fine all right good <laughs> your woman's not here yet all right so i won't you have another sunday school answer it is interesting isn't it this, this is one of the, um, I was just talking with, uh, I think it was Darlene, right? On how you have all these pieces, right? Some are important, and some are, uh, who are you? What's your name? But it takes all of them, right? It takes all of them. Otherwise, you don't have the story at all. And if somebody's not doing their part, it all falls apart. Right? You could make an argument for almost everybody up there. right? If you don't have Ahasuerus, right, which everybody is floating around, and all these pieces are floating around, the story falls apart. If you don't have Esther doing her part, yes, this particular story falls apart, but then we have another story. right? If Esther doesn't do her part, Mordecai's not needed. right? If Mordecai doesn't do his part, we don't have the Esther that we have, right? Because her parents died. He's been taking care of her. If he blows her off and leaves her, man, I can't take care of another kid. I mean, what in the world? If he doesn't do that part, we don't have the Esther we have. If we don't have Vashti and her going against her man, we don't have a story, right? Because the queen is still there. 
If, uh, if we don't have Big Than and Tiresh doing their part, just being disgruntled with the king, we don't have Mordecai being the secession story being set up, right? If we don't have Hatak, the messenger between Mordecai and um, Esther, if he doesn't do his job right, messages get mixed up, people act on wrong information, the story's all screwed up, right? If we don't have Haggai, right? He's the one in the house of the keeper of the women, right? He's in charge there. But he's the one that shows Esther favor. He's the one that, when it's Esther's turn to go into King Ahasuerus, that gives her what she needs to go into the king, where everybody gets to ask and, you know, all that jazz. She, he just goes, well, whatever you want me to have, I'll, I'll take that. You know, that's what he, his job is there. If we don't have Zeresh, right, She's interesting. Yeah, encouraging her husband, but she's the one that suggested the gallows that he gets hung on. Wow, how messed up is that? He wasn't going to do that at first, but then he ends up being the one on it. Uh, Harbona is the dude that um, pointed out the gallows, right? He's the one that's the guard that's in there with um, uh, Hazarus and Esther and... Um, Haman at the, at the very end where Hazarus comes back in from the garden, finds him on the bed with Esther, and he goes, wait a minute. And the guard goes, whoop, covers his face, and hey, he has a gallows over there. And Haman go, or, uh, Hazarus goes, hang him. Right? He's that guy. Yeah, they hang the ten sons as well later on. Right? So if we don't have... My favorite guy is Mimukin because my wife is the plant here because we talked about this yesterday, because that was not her answer, because uh, she had a different answer yesterday. He's the one at the kind of a pivot point where Vashti is offended. Vashti offended the king. The king's irate. And he goes, the king goes to his wise men. And this is the wise men that speaks up and goes, let's remove her from being queen. And then he gives his reasons, and we'll, we'll cover that hopefully in a little bit here. Right? But he's the one, he's the one that I think has the most guts in all this. Because, okay, yeah, you could be the wise man, you could be the trusted counselor, but when you say, let's get rid of the queen, how does the king take that? You know? I mean, you know he's mad. You can see that. But when you say, yeah, let's get rid of your wife, right? How's that going to go over exactly, right? So it takes some guts to be that wise man. And that's what he did. And then that sets the rest of the story in motion, right? Because if we don't have that moment, if we don't have that moment, we don't have the need for Esther, right? And we'll, we'll go on from there. Who else? This guy, he's the least one, the keeper of the women afterwards. He's just mentioned as a transition piece. But it is interesting. If we take a look at 1 Corinthians. What does this tell us about God? Because we did have three votes for God. He's in everything, right? And... We, un we like to think we understand that God's in control. I mean, we say that, right? God's in control of all things, right? This book really, I think, does prove that. Because of all these pieces, and if everybody, God's controlling all these chess pieces to get to where the end result is, because whose plan is it? It's God's plan. We've covered this since the beginning, right? Who's the one doing the work? God is. What book shows that more than Esther? I, I don't know, because of all the different people that are involved there, I'm not sure which does. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. Uh, and this is talking about the body, right? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Right? Pastors mentioned this verse recently. We've covered it a little bit. We see that totally here. 
Because if you take one members of this body out, this story is all changed, right? If you take, and we have this same thing in the church, if you take one member and their responsibilities out of the church, the church changes. It has to, right? Somebody else has to fill in. Somebody else has to step up, right? We even see that in the story here. Right? So we have similarities between what God is doing here and what God is doing in a church. Even what God does in a family. You take a family member out and the whole dynamic changes. It has to. All right. So those things are all interesting there. So yeah, for that, I kind of like this book. It's an amazing little book. Um, let's go take a look at it. Esther, this is going to be part one. Because we're not getting through. There's too much stuff in Esther. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, there we go. It's not that big of a book. So it's like you can read it in like a day or two, depending on what your kind of Bible reading it is and how involved in the story you get. Okay, I can't turn one page. Hang on. It's the page I need. There we go. Very good. Esther. Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. Smiley face. Right? Okay. Who says the Bible isn't relevant, right? There's emojis in the Bible. There you go. All right. So we're going to stop there for a second because this, this whole lesson, this whole topic, this whole Ahasuerus needs a disclaimer, all right? There are details that are given in Esther chapter 1, verse 1, describing Ahasuerus. Why? A, what are they, and B, why? We've talked about the importance of details before. Okay. Authenticity. Authenticity, right? Authority, right? Validity. All those good words, right? Authority, validity. What's interesting about this is it spells out which Ahasuerus, right? This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 107 and 20 provinces. Okay, so there are disagreements over who this Ahasuerus is. Okay? That's our guy. There are disagreements who this is, both historically and in commentaries. Okay? So I am going to give you the best information that I have and what I have figured out. Is it 100% right? I don't know. If you do your own research, Peter, and you find out that the uh, Hazwares is different, I'm not going to argue with you. You could be right. You could be wrong. I don't know. Okay? So that's where it is. I'll give you that. There is a Hazuerus. We know we have a name. It is a common name, okay, which lends to some of the problems, right? Whenever you have uh, mighty leaders, right, everybody names their kid after them, right? Think about Titus and General Titus in Roman times, right? Same thing. Is the book of Titus written by the General Titus? No, right? But he was named after the guy, okay? So is a Hazuerus Xerxes? Or is Ahasuerus Artaxerxes? There's an argument both ways. Okay? Or is it a third guy? Cambyses, right? The problem with him is he wasn't a ruler over India, which this one specifically says that he was. But a lot of people will point to that guy. I don't know why. I didn't have time to research all that out. Right? But there's a big rabbit trail that goes with this guy. All right? So, it's more likely me that a it's a common name because like the confusing period with the kings of Judah and Israel right especially when they were naming their sons after the other king and they're both reigning at the same time it was a whole big mess there there's also the issue with the area with the Medes and the Persians and the area that they covered and who was king where and when Right? Similar to the way uh, in the New Testament, the Herods 
words, okay? You got Herod over here, but you got a Herod over here. And sometimes they overlap territory. Sometimes they take over the other territory. Sometimes they hate each other, you know, but you got all these Herods flying around. Well, which Herod are you talking about? Well, which Ahasuerus are you talking about? Okay, so that's kind of what's the problem with this, okay? And it's even an issue that we see later on in the book of Esther. If we take a look at Esther, chapter 2, where Mordecai is introduced. Esther, chapter 2, verse 5. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. All right. Where have we heard this before? Right? Saul. King Saul. Okay. So wait, Mordecai is from the lineage of King Saul? Think about that for a second. What's, what's our lineage here? Benjamite, son of Kish, son of Shimei, son of Jair, Mordecai. You got four. Four generations. Where was King Saul? Right? Son of Kish, but time period. Where was, where was King Saul? He was one of the first kings, right? Okay. First king, then David, then Solomon, then Rehoboam, then... Um, Next, and so on, so forth. After that, Nebuchadnezzar comes in, captivity 70 years. Captivity of 70 years. This is after the captivity. Okay. This is during the same time period as Ezra and Nehemiah. Do four generations make it that far back to King Saul? No, they don't. Right? Is he a Benjamite? Yes. Right? Is Kish a common name? Yes. Is Saul a common name? Yes. Is Ahasuerus a common name? Yes. But you can see how easy that can be to go, oh, wait a minute. No, that doesn't match. The time, the time to get from A to B is not A to B. Right? So we got to look at those things and consider those things and go, okay, wait a minute. Something else is going on here. Yes, names are similar, especially if you're a Benjamite. Who wouldn't want you named after a, a former king? And now it has words, right? Okay, so that's kind of where we are with this. Chuck. Sometimes the Hebrews where they're referring to, they go skip a generation. Sure. Well, even if you skip a generation with Mordecai, you're not making it that far. Right, yeah, very good. It's true. Yeah, you can get in dangerous places like that. So you do need to pay attention. You do need to look. You do need to consider. Now, for example, there is more than one Ahasuerus listed in the Bible. Right? I'll show you in a second. Right? Because we have the one in the book of Esther. We know that one. We know that guy. We're familiar with him. Go back to Esther chapter, or Ezra chapter 4, verse 6. Ezra chapter 4, verse 6. Now remember, the book of Ezra, along with Nehemiah, are written after the captivity, because Ezra is doing the rebuilding process. Right? So that's what's going on here. Ezra chapter 4, verse 6, talks about, And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Okay, so if you remember, Ezra goes back with a crew to work on rebuilding the temple, and the people of the land that were there at the time were like, whoa, whoa, no, and they always tried to hinder the building process, right? So they're writing letters to the kings, right? In verse 5, they wrote letter, uh, they hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus the king, even until Darius the king, and then when Ahasuerus was king, they wrote unto him, it was like, well, can you make it stop? And then after that, in verse 7, in the days of Artaxerxes, they were like, can you do something about this? And nothing's being done because, hey, God wants it done. Right? So there's an Ahasuerus in Ezra. There's a Ahasuerus named in Esther. 
there's also an Ahasuerus named in Daniel. Ezekiel Daniel. Come on, Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. In the first year, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, was, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. All right, so here you have Daniel mentioning another, I'll say not necessarily another, but mentioning Ahasuerus by name, right, as being, first year, with his son being Darius, okay? I don't know that all three of these Ahasuerus are the same guy, okay? Because remember, Daniel, while Daniel's referencing after the captivity, I don't know, it gets really confusing. But there are things that can happen here. If Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, is reigning, and he is promoting the building of the land of Israel again, we read in Ezra, we had Cyrus and Darius and then Ahasuerus, right? So the order there in the two books is different as to who's ruling when. So in one, you have the son ruling before the father, and the other, it's flipped around. So I don't know how that can be. Now, granted, I'll preface this by saying God can do whatever he wants. So I'll leave that there. But I don't know that these three are all the same person, okay? I would go with probably two of the three are the same as the one in Esther, but it makes for an interesting story either way. Because if you take the one in Ezra, right, the, inha- the Hazarus, who the inhabitants of the land wrote to when the Jews started rebuilding, in the beginning of his reign, would have an influence or a potential influence on his decision-making process when Haman came to him, right? Because remember, Haman's like, well, these people, they don't follow our laws or our rules. And he's like, okay, yeah, whatever. If he already has that in the back of his mind, that somebody else early in his reign wrote to him saying, hey, there's this belligerent people building, and did you authorize this? And can we make this stop? Maybe he's putting pieces together and it's like, yeah, sure, whatever, take care of them all. Don't know. If it's the one in Daniel that matches, that Darius is the son of Ahasuerus, who further promotes the building of Israel and Jerusalem, right? Whose mother would have had an influence on him to support going back to Israel? So that's an interesting twist, right? Because that could have potentially made Darius' mother Esther, right? So either way, it kind of has an interesting pull and effect on things, right? All I have to say, I don't know where those two fit in. There are multiple names. I don't know if they're all the same. If you find somebody different, more part to you, Peter. Yeah. Grandfather and grandson have the same name with the thing in between, so that doesn't make it as confusing. Yep. Back to the Ezra one. Ezra's, and then verse 7, there's further explanations about it. Larry's, Artaxerxes, is the same guy as Ezra here in the Ezra book. Could be. The wording in there, though, makes it look like it's a separate person. So depending on how you read it, it's either this, it could be the same person or it could be a separate person because like you were going with the son, it would be Xerxes and then Artaxerxes who reigned after him and they're just trying to tag whoever. Yes, I will give you that. But on a Saturday, that's as far as I got. Okay. Now, here's the trick. You read a commentary on it, great. Read a second one and you'll have a different answer. So that doesn't help at all, right? 
Yeah, there was, right? He's after that. All right, so with that, I will just throw that disclaimer in there that there are all multiples or potential for multiples. And then when you see it, uh, much like Mordecai, just keep in the back of your head, okay, who, which one, what are we talking about? Okay, so there you go. We all understand the disclaimer? We're happy with that? Okay, good. <clears throat> now, with that, Ahasuerus, our guy, he reigned 20 years. All right, he reigned 20 years, the one we're talking about, over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia, right? He reigned from 485 B.C. to 465 B.C. That's 20 years, I did the math. All right, good. So now, go back to Esther. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Esther chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. The, that in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. All right, great. So what's happening? What's happening? Celebration. We have a, a feast going on, right? We have a feast going on. Uh, not yet. They're separated, right? There's a feast going on. Who's all there? A whole bunch of people, right? Important people, okay? So there's a feast with important people going there. What year is this? All right, third year of his reign. Why is that important? <laughs> Why is that important? We need more time. We need so much more time with Esther. It's such a good book, right? You got all these things going on here. This is the third year of his reign. There's a feast with the princes and the servants and all those guys, right? And in verse 4, he's showing the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even in 104 score days. What's going on? How long is this? 180 days. This is a 180-day feast. 180 days. What on earth is going on here? What on earth is going on here? Because in verse 5, we start off with, And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So in the first five verses of Esther, how many feasts do we have? We have two. We have two feasts going on. At, and I see where Rose is getting three, and we'll get there in a sec. Well, it'll probably be next week now. But yes, there's, technically there's three going on because the women are somewhere else. What's happening? Historically, what is happening? Who is the Hazarus? What has he done? Go back to verse 1. He's conquering. Right? And he has come back from victory. And what do you do when you are victorious? You celebrate. You show everything. Look, people, we're amazing. Look what I did. Look what our army has done. Look what we brought back. This is amazing. We're awesome. We're great. We're wonderful. Right? That's what's going on. He's riding a high here. Okay? That's what's happening. The celebration of military success, and this is a planning party for a campaign against Greece. Okay? That's what's going on here. If you look at verse 5, right, we have this, this secondary feast. All the, all the important people, all the generals, they're going back, and then you have what's left in the palace, and it has a little thank you party for these guys, right? All the important people that are still there. And it's all the fancy decorations with the hangings and six, 
right? And the pavement and all this, and there's drinking. And in verse 8, and the drinking was according to the law, none did compel. For so the king had appointed blah, 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 right? Interesting phrase there, according to the law. We'll see that again later. It's interesting, just the little nuggets that God throws in sometimes. Why, why would you say that? Why would you say that? We'll see that same phrasing again next week when it comes to Vashti, right? And her, uh, uh, her consequences, right? And what happens to her. It comes back according to the law. Well, there's that too, yeah. right? But yeah, which is interesting in the um, having that as criteria for your rules and how loose he is with things. You know, sure, Haman, write whatever whatever you want and seal it, and you know it's you're not even in control of what other people are writing. And sure, now it's stuck forever that way. Really, we should be more careful with that ring, huh? Right? Well, that's what's going on there. Sometimes, right? But none did compel. Um, where are we going? We have our timeline. Nuts. All right. So we're going to have to remember this that this is his planning party. For Greece because this is the third year third year of his reign when do we see Esther because we know Vashti gets bounced and we see in chapter 2 that we see the common little phrase after these things right well after what things at least chapter 1 right but what has transpired? Because what? when do we see Esther? Esther goes in, chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Yes. Esther was taken to the king of Hazarus, into his royal house royal, in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the, oh, wait a minute, seventh year. How do we get from the third year to the seventh year? Sorry. Yeah, after these things. Yeah, four years after. So between chapter one and events in chapter four, there's four years that go by. There's four years that go by. What happens in those four years? Huh? Probably some fighting. Good job, David. Greece happens. Right? Greece happens. And then in the year, let's see, six, where'd it go? Because he started reigning in 485. Yep. So in 480 BC, 480 BC, there's a famous battle, a naval battle of Salmis which is Ahasuerus' forces against the forces of Greece. And Ahasuerus gets stomped on. He gets stomped on. He had the superior forces, he had the superior numbers, but he gets stomped on. And he crawls back to uh, Persia, right? Shushan, right? He crawls back. Right? And now what happens as we look at chapter 2 after these things? Because right? remember, Vashti was before he left. So Vashti gets bounced. He goes off to war. He gets stomped on. He comes crawling back. He opens up the door to his palace, and it's empty. Right? No comforter, no woman there, no wife, 
just his dog, right? After these things. So what is Ahasuerus? Dude is depressed right now, right? And thus launches the plan of the virgins. Okay, we got to restore his public, his PR guys got together and was like, okay, we got to restore some sort of image going on. Let's, uh, let's do the plan of the virgins here. And we'll, we'll show that our king is still virile, still strong, still, still with us, right? And that's how, what launches all that. But we'll have to cover that next week because we are out of time, right? So hopefully we'll, we'll get more into that. This will probably be three-part then, I would imagine. <laughs> But we had to lay some groundwork today, so that's all right. So come back next week, uh, and you'll get more, all right? And with that, we'll conclude our epic adventure through God's Word today. Y'all are dismissed.